The green flash is a phenomenon which has captivated seafarers and astronomers for generations. It's one of the most elusive yet frequent events that can happen here on Earth, occurring at least once a day in numerous places. But surprisingly, unlike much more rare incidents in the sky such as eclipses and shooting stars, I'm sure many of you will have never experienced the green flash, or have even heard of it. No, I'm not making it up when I say this is quite a common effect that happens at many sunsets and even some sunrises. Although it was only scientifically verified as even existing as late as the 1800s. Here I'm going to go into detail on the physics behind the green flash and also give some tips so that you have the best chance to observe it yourself. We begin by looking at optics and refraction. As you'll likely know, light can be thought of as a wave, which is able to be refracted or have its path bent at an interface between two media. This can be seen in many simple school-level science experiments where light passes from air to a more optically dense medium, such as glass. The amount of refraction or bending of the light is dependent on its wavelength, with shorter wavelengths being refracted most as they're slowed down most by entering the more optically dense medium. So if you have a light source, which is a mixture of wavelengths, the light will split and each wavelength will refract at a different angle from the interface. We see different wavelengths as different colours, with red being longer than violet, which is the shortest we can see with our eyes. All the colours in between also refract different amounts. This is how prisms split white light into a rainbow spectrum, as white light is made up of every colour. Interestingly, this is also what causes rainbows, as light refracts through more optically dense water droplets in the air and splits into the rainbow of visible colours. This is also why red is on the opposite side of violet in every rainbow. Now, with this in mind, let me show on the screen a diagram which shows the different wavelengths of light contained within light from our sun. The horizontal axis is wavelength or colour, and the vertical axis is a scale for how much of that wavelength is present in sunlight. The shape of this graph is called a Planck black body curve, and as you can see, our sun peaks in the green part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This means that the most common colour light in sunlight is green. So I guess you could say the sun is green, which might sound strange, but you have to remember it also contains significant and roughly equal amounts of red and blue light too, which, when mixed together with the green, our eyes perceive as white light. Hence, the sun emits white light, and it's important to note that the green flash is not caused by the sun peaking in the green part of the spectrum. Instead for that, we now must consider how this light interacts with Earth, notably the atmosphere. As you go higher up and gain altitude, Earth's atmosphere gets less dense, as the strength of gravity is weaker, allowing for lighter and more energetic particles to escape, and heavier ones to remain near the surface. This has the added effect of changing the optical density of the atmosphere, making it denser near the ground. When sunlight strikes the atmosphere, it acts as a series of lenses of increasing density. When the sun is overhead, the refractive effect is quite small, as the incidence angle is tiny. But when the sun is at a larger angle compared to an observer, such as at sunrise or sunset, the bending of the light gets magnified. Here the light is easily split into its constituent colours, and the red and orange light appears in the sky below the green and blue. So the image of the sun gets split into separate colour-dependent ones giving us multiple images of the same object, just in different colours. This isn't unique to the sun. Dispersion like this happens also when observing stars using simple binoculars or non-adapted telescopes or optics. It causes the images of stars to appear to be made up of slightly displaced and different coloured images, such as the ones I'm showing on screen here. The same thing is effectively happening with the sun at sunset and sunrise. For completeness, this is also why the sky goes red and orange, since they get refracted less by our atmosphere. The final key point in explaining the green flash comes in the composition of the atmosphere itself. So far we've said the sunlight gets split into different colour images, with red on the bottom and blue on the top. So why is there a green flash and not a blue flash? The abundance of oxygen and nitrogen molecules in particular are much smaller than the wavelength of blue light and preferentially scatter it in random directions. During the daytime this causes blue light to overall scatter down much more and enter our eyes than any other colour. This is why the sky appears blue. But at sunset, when every colour has been refracted towards us already, this added dispersion of blue light essentially causes it to be filtered out, so the blue image on top is almost never actually there. Then the next colour in the sequence is green, so once the red, orange and yellow sun images have set, there's around two seconds before the green image also sets, and this is then perceived as a green flash. So what you're observing as the green flash is essentially the green image by itself. It's worth noting that there can be a blue flash sometimes, when the atmospheric conditions are just right and don't scatter out almost all the blue light, although this is extremely rare. If you wanted to go about observing the green flash yourself, you'll most likely want to do it at sunset. This will be in the western sky, and while it does happen at sunrise too, your opportunity is enhanced at sunset, 
due to the direction of Earth's rotation giving you slightly more time for it to occur. Another thing you'll have to consider is where you're looking. It's not a good idea to watch a sunset over buildings or high ground, as the effects would be too subtle and quick to see. You want to look over a flat horizon, where you'll easily be able to distinguish the different colour images and see the final green flash. So going to a western facing beach would be ideal. You'll also want to avoid looking at the sun until it's just about to set, not least to protect your eyes, but also looking at it for too long can cause after images to appear, which can then hinder your chances to see just the green. And finally, you'll need to observe at a time of cool and clear atmospheric conditions. This is notoriously an elusive phenomenon, so you'll need the conditions to be perfect to give yourself the best chances of seeing it. With that being said, leave me a comment letting me know if you've ever seen the green flash yourself, and also if it was intentional or just by chance. As always, if you made it this far and enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It's free, it helps on my channel a bunch, and you can always change your mind. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.